If you've been around Jesus and you're not ashamed to testify. If he's been a rose in your field of Sharon. If he's sweetened up things in your life. If he made your situation better. You don't have to wait for no preacher to tell you to give God some praise. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. The Song of Solomon is a moving love story between a young country girl, a Shulamite girl, and King Solomon. In intimate and delicate poetry, the lovers express intense passion, deep longing for one another's embrace. The young girl compares her love to a frantic search in anticipation of her lover's presence. While Solomon likens his bride's beauty to a picturesque garden and the taste of delicious fruit, Yet even in this eloquent expression of passion between this bride and bridegroom, that is an exhortation to sexual purity before marriage. The book of the Song of Solomon celebrates human sexuality within the context of marriage. This book has not always been understood in that way. It has usually been understood as an allegory for God's love for his people Israel and in the New Testament as the love Christ has for his bride, the church. And although those allegories may have some application, the Bible is not just about what God does and what God says and who God is, but how God expects us to interact with each other in the bonds of matrimony. Don't get quiet on me, please. The author of the Song of Solomon is this rapper, King Solomon. He's the son of David. He is the third king of Israel. And his poetry, his rap, his prose, his line is sweeter than any that you will ever hear. Uh, he has Luther and, and Snoop Dogg and 50 Cent and all of them beat when he talks about his love for that Shulamite woman. Her lips are like threads of scarlet. Her cheeks are like pomegranate. Her neck is like the Tower of David, builded for an armory. Breasts like twin rows feeding among the lilies. Snoop can't say it like that. It's a deep longing for his lover's embrace. Now, if the Bible is the book about God, then one may well ask, what does a narrative 
about human sexuality have to do with theology? This is an even more potent question when we observe that the name of God is not even mentioned in this book like the book of Esther. Nevertheless, the themes notably absent about God is Solomon's poetry describing his love for this Shulamite woman like the love God has for his own people. There's a longing, there's a deep desire for the lover's embrace. And if you are God's child, when you are absent from his presence, or when you are not in his embrace, there's a longing, there's a deep, dark chasm that separates the lover from the beloved. Because unless you find yourself in him, there is an emptiness, a meaninglessness that cannot be filled with worldly comfort. People are trying to satisfy a yearning in their hearts that can only be satisfied by God. There is a God-shaped vacuum in the soul of every individual that no human thing can satisfy. Money can't do it. The company of good friends can't do it. Good food, a nice house, a nice car, beautiful clothes, all of those things are necessary and heartwarming, but but when your soul is weary, when you cannot be comforted by what you have acquired, you need the warm embrace of a lover seeking his beloved. Just as some of the Psalms have a contemporary application as well as a future-oriented or an eschatological application, the entire Song of Solomon has deep levels of fulfillment that can only come once the beloved has been found by her lover. Uh, there's an affection, uh, there's an affinity, an intimacy that one has with God that cannot be experienced outside that relationship. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's apparent, brothers and sisters, that Solomon deeply loves this Shulamite girl. And it is obvious that she is passionate about her affection for King Solomon. And as long as they are separated from one another, there is a yearning, there is an earnestness, there is an honest affection that is lost and, and put aside until they are in each other's embrace. Likewise, the child of God is lonesome and, and, and sad and put off until he or she can find the arms of his or her beloved. Uh, we are looking for love in all the wrong places. We are, we are chasing after things that are not gonna last that long. Uh, we are trying to satisfy ourselves with things that demand more than we are able to put out. We are trying to look to people to give us our sense of self-worth. We are trying to find it in a career. We are trying to find it in a job. We are trying to find it in a neighborhood. We are trying to find it in a community of people. We are trying to find it in success. We are trying to find it in these famous people on television. We are living our lives vicariously through the Kardashians, these fools on TV who are famous just for being famous. 
We're trying to make ourselves happy with things that we buy and things that we wear and things that we own, but until we are in the arms of our beloved. I need a witness here who can help me testify. I tried it all. And I see you're trying to act holy like you haven't done anything that you're ashamed of. But some of us here can testify. I went after it all. Come on, talk back to me if you can. There was no drink I didn't enjoy. There was no club I didn't have a good time in. I wish I had a witness here. If I could get my hands on it, I got my hands on it. If I could get to it, I got to it. I tried it all. But at the end of my search, I have concluded. I wish I had a witness here. At the end of my trying to find satisfaction, in things that don't satisfy. I've come to this conclusion until I'm in the arms of my beloved. There's no real peace. There's no real satisfaction because the soul is restless. Augustine says, until it finds rest in him. Now this young Shulamite girl says to her beloved, I'm not just like one of the flowers in the field. I am the rose of Sharon. I'm not like these other 700 you got on the side. I'm not like one of these 300 you marry. There's something about me that separates me from all the other flowers in the field. Somebody ought to help me here. This girl has self-esteem. This girl knows who she is. And she knows what her lover will miss out on if he doesn't make the right choice. Come on, help me if you can. And sister, Shulamite girl, know who you are. You're not just like any other flower in the field. And make him treat you like you're not just some other flower in the field. Well, I wish I had time to get into all of that. Uh, I, I'm made in the image and the likeness of God. There's something special about me. What is man that you're so mindful of him? And the son of man that you would even visit him. You have made him a little lower than the angels and have crowned him with glory and honor. I'm not just some flower in the field. Some wallflower. Some wilting plant that you can talk to any kind of way that you can treat any kind of way. I am the rose of Sharon. Uh, Sharon is a field in Palestine where deciduous plants grow in season. And when those plants are out of season, the field is wrought with 
thistles and brambles. But in the midst of these thistles and brambles is a flower that's out of place. Uh, roses are not indigenous to this region. Uh, this flower is out of its place. It, it just came up from somewhere among these brambles and thistles, but the flower and its fragrance is out of place. It's, it's fragrant. It's, it's blossoming in a region where there are brambles and thistles. Its beauty is so stark in its contrast to its surroundings. There's nothing about where it is that says it ought to grow in that region. It's delicate. It's fragrant. It's not indigenous to the region. It just came out of nowhere. It doesn't belong there. It's, it's not indigenous to the region. It, it wasn't grown there naturally. It just shows up for a season. Brambles and thistles are wrought all over the region, the field of Sharon. But in Sharon, a rose comes up that does not belong there. It's just there to flower and to blossom and to give fragrance to the brambles and the thistles. It'll soon be gone because it doesn't come from there. It's just there to give fragrance and sweetness to brambles and thistles. I am the rose of Sharon. is the rose in the field of Sharon. I am is the rose in the field of Sharon. I am just shows up where brambles and thistles are, where things are dry and parched, dank and musty. There's no beauty, there's no light, there's no love. Everything there is dead and lost, dry and down. But then a rose shows up. I am the rose of Sharon. I'm not indigenous to this region. I wasn't born here. I showed up for a season to give fragrance and sweetness to all who I encounter. You're going to help me preach this, won't you? One day, Jesus came through 42 generations, got on a nine-month nature train, born of a virgin girl. I wish I had a witness here. In Bethlehem of Judea, brambles and thistles. And he came into this world, a place that is dry and lost and dead and dark. But I am became for us a rose in the field of Sharon. Now, I can't testify for anybody else. I can only be a witness for myself. My field of Sharon needed a rose. I've had some dry, dark days. I've had some loveless and, and hateful things to happen in my life. I wish I had a witness here. And there's not much about me that I can brag on. Because there are some decisions I wish I hadn't made. I haven't got a witness. 
There are some words I wish I could take back. There are some things in my past that I wish I could undo. There are some skeletons in my closet that if I'd open the door, all of them would fall out right now. And I'm talking about since I've been a Christian. I'm not, I'm not talking about when I was in the world. I'm talking about before I got, since I've been saved, there's some things I did I wish I could go back and erase. Let me, let me talk to somebody back there who's trying to act all holy and, and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. You've never done anything wrong. You, you don't have anything you regret. You don't have any decisions you wish you could take back. Look at some of us in here right now who don't mind telling the truth. If I had known then what I know now, I would have done some things differently. Have I got a witness here? If I had just listened to somebody's advice, if I hadn't been so hard-headed, some of y'all here was raised like I was raised. Some of your old people told you growing up, you make your bed hard. Come on, help me preach a minute. A hard head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to think that was just an old fogey saying. But I lived long enough to find out that that's true. Have I got a witness here? But I thank God that when I messed up, he sent a fragrance, uh, an odor in my life, a sweetness in my situation that let me know that all hope is not lost. This rose is fragrant. And to encounter it leaves one different than when he came. You've heard me talk about my old member who's going to be with the Lord, uh, uh, Miss Katie Hill. Miss Katie was a sweet member of my church, and she was 100 years old. Eyesight clear as an eagle. She walked to my house in the summertime to bring me a birthday gift from about two miles from where she lived. And I said, Miss Katie, you shouldn't have done that. I could have walked over there to get it. She said, if I'd have wanted you to walk to get it, I'd have called you. She said, I want to bring it to you. And Miss Katie was a sweet, sweet, pretty old woman. And uh, she'd come to church on Sunday mornings. And I could tell when her daughter had gone to work and didn't have time to get her dress. Miss Katie wore all her jewelry. And she would just pour on Estee Lauder perfume. And she said, Reverend, I'd be so glad when my daughter got to go to work so I can wear all my stuff. You know, you know, you know how old folks are. They like to put on all their rings. Every necklace that she has, she put it on. Nothing matched. But Miss Katie's daughter was at work and she wanted to look good. So she put on all her stuff and bathed herself in Estee Lauder perfume. And she would not let me leave that church till she hugged me and kissed me on the lips. And uh, all day, till about Tuesday, I smelled like Estee Lauder perfume. Somebody ought to help me preach it. Because I had been around Miss Katie. She, she, she embraced me. Wouldn't let me leave till she kissed me on the lips. And for two days, I smelled like who I had been around. Somebody ought to help me preach it. When you hang around with
like the lover who embraced his beloved. When you leave his presence, you smell like, you sound like, you walk like, you act like, you talk like who you've been around. I need somebody here to help me this morning. If you've been around Jesus and you're not ashamed to testify, if he's been a rose in your field of Sharon, if he's sweetened up things in your life, if he made your situation better, you don't have to wait for no preacher to tell you to give God some praise. You don't have to wait for the choir to sing to get you all excited. You don't need a praise leader to tell you, let's give God a hand of praise. You can be by yourself in the house. You can be riding in your own car. You can be sitting down in your den or your living room. Nobody around but you. But then you feel the embrace of the one who loves you. Somebody ought to help me here. He'll rock you when you get weary. He'll comfort you when you are lonely. He'll dry tears from your eyes. He'll open doors that were closed in your face. He'll make your enemies leave you alone. He'll put food on your table. He'll put joy bells ringing down in your heart. Is there anybody here knows what it feels like to be embraced by your lover? Jesus is the lover of my soul. I wish I had a witness here. He gives me joy in the midst of my sorrow. He gives me hope for my future tomorrow. When I'm sick, he heals my body. When I'm lonely, he comforts and cheers me. When I'm down, he picks me up. If I get too high, he puts me back in my place. Is there anybody here ever felt the embrace of the rose of Sharon? If the Lord been good to you, if the Lord ever surrounded you with his embrace, come on, testify now. Come on, tell somebody next to you. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Thank you for tuning in to A Call to Joy. It is our prayer that the Word of God has brought joy, strength, and faith to your life. We would love to have you as our guest at Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where we are exalting the Savior, equipping the saints, and evangelizing the sinner. For your convenience, we have a 7.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship service every Sunday morning and 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights. Lily Grove is located at 7034 Till Wester Street, Houston, Texas, 77021, or feel free to visit our website at www. That lilygrove.org. Until next week, God has called us to a life of joy. Mm-hmm.